Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all well. Right, so yeah, uh, I've been away for a while. <laughs> so I thought it's, I should make a video and say hello to you guys. And I know that's becoming a regular thing now, isn't it? Seems to be every video I make now. It's like, oh, I've been away for a while. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been taking some time out and wanted to just make a video today and just say hello and see how you're all doing. Try and catch up. So I've been out of way, I don't know how long it's been there. The last video was a while ago, probably about a month or so ago, maybe. And yeah, I'll be, I'll be honest, the only reason I've not come back online is because I've been taking a break from YouTube. I just wanted to get away for a bit because I was just getting to a point where I just needed to get some clarification, really, some clarity in terms of this whole retro gaming thing. And, you know, I was... I was I've been up and down, as you know, over the God knows how many years now since I've been doing this, and I've, you know, <laughs> constantly changing my mind. Like a lot of people do, you know, a lot of people change their mind when it comes to collecting and gaming and all that. And, you know, we all buy, sell, rebuy, sell, rebuy, sell, rebuy again. But, you know, it, it's the way it is, you know, like Daz Cojones Dolores, Cojones Doloro always says, the collection is always evolving. And he's absolutely right, it is. That's, that's the best way to look at uh, collecting in general, no matter what you collect for, I think. But yeah, I just, I don't know, I got to a point where I just thought, what do I actually want from this now? What, why, am I, why am I doing YouTube for one? Why am I playing retro games? Do I still enjoy them? Do I still want to play them? Most of all, the most important question is, do I want to continue collecting? Because the collecting thing is the thing that really screws you. And you know, I'm sure there'll be other people out there who feel exactly the same way I've been through this as well. I just, I don't know, uh, I've always had that hardcore collector mode for some reason since I started doing it where you know it has to be in box complete not so much anal as far as it being like it has to have the bags and the paperwork like just as long as it's got the box and the manual I was always happy but I always try to strive for getting it as mint as possible even though it's pretty unrealistic when they're 20 to 30 year old games but you can still get some really good condition games as you all know that and so I thought you know I, I was trying to get myself out of that mindset and because I've, I've always been as I say mint as possible in box with the manual trying to get those high ticket games that some of which probably weren't games that i really wanted i was just curious to play and also it's a, comp a very 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 small part of me was the kudos of having that game in the collection and i'm sure any of us can admit that that's true uh, you know i'm not a kind of braggy person you know, i don't make youtube videos to brag i could quit youtube tomorrow and it wouldn't make any difference to my life you know i do this to meet other people in the community, like-minded retro gamers. That's the only reason I've ever done YouTube videos for. So, you know, I'm not a bragger. I'm not someone who is going to go, oh, look, I've got this amazing game that's 300 quid. That doesn't mean anything to me. If the game's not worth playing, there's no point in having it anyway. But, you know, deep down, if I'm honest, there is that tiny little bit of you that feels good about having the kudos attached to having a high-ticket item in your collection if you have one, or two, or maybe three or four. But, you know, if you've got that, that game on, on the shelf that when you do a video and someone will watch the video and go, Christ, I can't believe you managed to get that. But not jealousy, they'll be like, uh, not envious either, they'll just be like really impressed and be like, oh, well done, dude, that's really cool that you managed to track that down, I'd love to play that one day. You know, so it's not really a bragging thing, but it's sort of, it, I don't know how to really explain it in, <laughs> I think you might know what I'm saying from that, I think that makes some kind of sense. I hope it does, probably not. But yeah. I want to get out of all of that and just you know start getting realistic and I just sat down and I felt thought about it and I thought well what do I really want to do here? Do I want to play retro games? Yes absolutely I love playing old games I enjoy them probably more than modern games but I still love my modern stuff you know I've never been someone who's like retro is the best don't care about modern games because I do care about modern games I play all the consoles that come out I'm always you know interested in buying new consoles when they come out and I enjoy playing new games I enjoy what they offer. You know, they're a completely different experience to what retro games offer. But then on the retro side, I do find that the 2D games are more my thing and more enjoyable. And also you've got the whole nostalgia attached to it. You know, as soon as you play a game that you played when you was a kid and it brings back memories straight away of people you hung out with, friends you had, you know, times you know where you've completed a game and you've been chuffed because you managed to do so well at the game. And you know, like back when I completed Street Fighter 2 all the way through with Ryu without any continues and I recorded it on VHS. And little memories like that, you know, the, the things that really make this whole retro thing the reason why we do it, I suppose. Uh, it's to recapture really our youth and to relive the past. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a great thing. 
but I just wanted to have a good think about where I want to be. And as I say, do I want to play retro games? Absolutely, yes I do. Then I thought, well, do I want to collect anymore? And that's when it came to the borderline of not doing it. And I thought, you know what? I want, what I need to do, decide exactly what consoles I want, and then give it a shot. Once I'm absolutely 100%, buy what I want. If it doesn't work out, then sell it all off and just say, that's it, I'm done. Because otherwise, you're just going in a perpetual circle of um, anxiety, frustration, and loss of money because you're constantly throwing money at something. And that's not a good way to be in your life, is it? So I just need to have that clarity, understand what I actually want from this. So yeah, I had a good thing. Now, you may notice that the consoles I had aren't there anymore. Yeah, they did go. I had a good think about where I wanted to be. And if I figured what I'm gonna do going forward is just buy games that I wanna play and enjoy and that I know I like. Not worry so much about the collecting part of things. Of course, you know, if I'm buying box games, which I will, because I don't really like to buy a loose cart if I can. But, you know, try not to be as anally psychotic about the condition of them. And just as long as I've got the box in my hand, I'm not completely beaten to hell, of course. You know, as long as I'm in decent condition, that's all that matters, really. And when it comes to the big ticket items, just be realistic. I mean, there's, there's games out there, like one that I'm really interested in, which at the moment you can get a loose cartridge for like 50, 60 quid. Box copy is going to cost you starting at three to three hundred and fifty, and that's not even in the best of condition. You've got the best of condition, you're talking four hundred plus, and six sixty was the one I saw recently for a brand new copy. So there's no common sense in paying another three hundred pound on top of the fifty quid for a cart just to get a box and manual. And that particular game's got shit box art, so it doesn't really matter. But you know what I mean? It's just yeah, I'll, in the back of my mind, it's the collector's going. Yes, but it's you know it's, it's complete in box and it's not about the price and the money shouldn't matter. It's about you know you save up for it, you get it, it's in the collection, you're happy with it. It's a game you're going to play to death anyway because you love it to bits. And you know it's nice how it box is complete. But then I think, but yeah, but that's 300 extra pound there that I could have spent on multiple games, or I could have bought records, or I could have bought Blu-rays, I could have bought clothes, I could have gone out and <laughs> done something in real world. You know, there's all these different things. So it's like it's not really valid to do that. It's more sensible to say, okay. The big ticket items, you're just going to have to bite the bullets and say, look, I ain't going to lay the money out. And you know, it, whether you can afford them or not, at the end of the day, you can always save up for these games if you really truly want them. But I just don't think it's worth spending all that cash. This just doesn't make sense to me really anymore. So any of the big ticket items, if I do buy any of those games I want, I'm just going to get them loose cart and be more sensible about it. Uh, and I feel quite okay about that, I feel comfortable. It doesn't bother me like it used to bother me, because I've, I, in the past I'd have been like, no, I have to have it bossed complete, no matter what, got to do it. So anyway, so as you know, I had an American Super Nintendo, I had a Sega Genesis as well. Both of those have gone, I sold those off, and when I had a good think about what I wanted to do, I kept the Amiga 500, because the Amiga 500 is extremely nostalgic to me, and it's a great system, and I really enjoy playing on it. And there's no collecting involved in that either, which is good. It's just, I've got a GoTech drive, so just play all the games digitally, and I can just play what I want when I want. There's no pressure there at all. So that's really good. So I kept that, that was definite. And then I thought, well, okay, so if I'm gonna continue this retro gaming thing, where am I gonna go? What consoles actually interest me? What do I actually wanna play? And I thought, you know what? It's always been the same thing. It's always been the 16-bit consoles, the Super Nintendo and the Mega Drive slash Genesis. And that's really where I'm at. And yes, I did obviously sell the American Snares and the Genesis. Now, there was another issue with the American Snares was that the prices in America at the moment on eBay, they're just getting silly. They're, they're being really stupid, like really common games. You've got idiots asking absolutely ludicrous prices. You can still get them for normal prices, but there's a lot of idiots asking for ridiculous prices. And when the games are on short supply, you know, like if a few of them have sold, then it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. And then there's other games which are just astronomical and completely out of my reach. And you know, as I say, you can save up for them over months, but do I really want to? No, I don't actually. So I thought that's it, I'm done with that. The Genesis I got rid of before I even had this uh, revelation, I suppose you can call it. And that was purely because I wasn't interested in it. I don't know what it is about the Genesis, it's weird. The Mega Drive, both the same console, but the Mega Drive I enjoy playing and I enjoy buying games for. The Genesis, I just don't, and I don't even know why, because I'm not one of these people, like my mate Alex Bluetonic 7K, who hates the word Genesis. It's just not natural, because it is the Mega Drive. I can't stand the word Genesis. Never have, never will, but I guess I'm gonna have to get used to it. And you know, I'm not, I'm, I was a, a Super Nintendo kid, so 
it doesn't mean anything to me, but really, yeah, it is the Mega Drive, it's not the Genesis. But, I don't know, I just couldn't be bothered to collect for the Genesis. I just looked at it one day and I thought, you know what, I've not even looked at eBay to find games for months, I've just had no interest. And I couldn't remember the last time I played on it either. So I sold that, and then I had this epiphany where I wanted to just really decide what I was going to do, because this was getting silly now, you know, the whole retro gaming collecting thing. So I decided, you know what? what, what makes me happen? Where did I start my collecting? I started my collecting in Japan with the Super Famicom and the Mega Drive. That's where I was always happiest. You know, the 16-bit era is my favorite. It always has been. You know, I've tried all the other consoles I've ever wanted to try. I should know by now at this point in 2016 where I want to actually lay my hat and what I want to play. And it's not about the collecting, it's about what I want to play. And you know, I end up like Soul Funk Retro Matt then. He says the other day, he's not a collector, he's a gamer. And I really respect that, because he's right. Yes, he's got a ton of games behind him, but he's not a collector, he's a gamer. He just buys the games to play and enjoy and to relive his youth. And therefore, by default, because you're buying games all the time, you just build a collection. You're not actually focusing on building a collection. It's just a natural evolution as you buy them, because you're buying them to play. And I thought that that's the best way to go about it. And I wish I'd had that revelation years ago because it would have saved me a ton of money. But there you go, you know, live and learn, I hope. So I thought, yeah, that's it, that's where I want to be, Japanese market. And I, and I had a good thing, and I went out and I bought myself a Japanese Mega Drive, first of all. Now, this is brilliant because what happened there was I was talking to Daz Cajonis de Lolo, and I mentioned to him I was considering getting one back. And he said, well, actually, Pete, uh, that one you sold to me, how would you like to buy it back? And I was like, well, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, because I bought another one last year at the show, so I've got two. So I was like, yeah, absolutely, Daz. So Daz did me a fantastic deal, because Daz is a great bloke like that. And I got my original mega Japanese Mega Drive from a couple of years ago that I sold. It might have been last year, I can't remember. I can't be 15 or 14, but I sold it to Daz at the time. Daz has now sold that back to me. I now have that in my possession. I'm very happy with that, so thank you very much, Daz. Uh, great bloke, as always, you know, one of the nicest blokes on, the, on, the, on YouTube in the community, in the retro community. Uh, yeah, really hooked me up well, so I'm really happy to have that back. And then I went and bought a Super Famicom, which I got from a UK seller. Now, I was going to get a box one, because obviously I do like to have the box console, so I think we all do. But the price of them at the moment is for a decent condition one, it's not yellow and has a decent box. Uh, you, you're talking over 100 quid, probably around about 130, 140. You can sometimes get them cheaper, but really if you want one in really nice condition that's the kind of price you've got to look at and uh, on ebay at the, at the moment you know, to get from japan and uh, i just wasn't willing to pay that i just thought now nah, you know what i'm going to be sensible for the first time i'm going to buy a loose console just have it to play and enjoy there's none of this collecting anal rubbish attached to it and then in the future i'll just pick up a box coffee a big box console when i feel the need to for the time being i just want one to play on and enjoy the games so i did so i went on ebay guy in the uk had one for sale a spare one that he had going I uh, got it really cheap, good price. Came with a couple of games as well. Uh, games that I'm not interested in. One I am interested in which is Street Fighter 2 World Warrior. But the box isn't in great shape. The cartridge is in absolutely terrible shape. And it also came with Breath of Fire and Populous 2. Uh, Pop Bre Populous 2 is in great nick. Breath of Fire is not in good condition. So I've just put them on eBay to get rid of them. I don't want them of no interest. But at least I can play Street Fighter for the time being. That's, that's the main thing. So yes, yeah, so I've got the Mega Drive. got the Super Famicom. And then after that, I went and bought one more console, and that is the PC Engine. So I went for the white one. I was going to go for the Core Graphics 2 because I saw Stu Ninja Bear Hub. He has one of those, and I really like the Core Graphics 2. It's beautiful. But the more I looked at it, the more I thought about it. I thought to me, you know, it's always been the white one is the PC Engine. Uh, all these extra different versions are great, but the white ones were where it's at, really. Growing up, I used to see it in the magazines. That was the one that I always envied and thought was a cool machine. And that is just a pure gaming system. I'm not buying that for any kind of collecting whatsoever, actually. I'm not buying the game's box. There isn't a lot of difference between loose Who card and boxed, but frankly, I don't care. I just want to just have the Who cards and just play the games. So I've only bought one game so far, which is R-Type, which I always buy when I buy a PC engine. It's not my de facto game. I just love that game. And I was talking to Ninja Bear Hug, and I was on about, I was going to get a baseball cards and, um, what's called album to store them in but I wasn't sure about if they would fit so I asked Stu if he could measure a card for me so I can get the measurements and he's such a nice bloke he says to me oh actually I've got a spare little storage unit so he, he said do you want it and I was like oh yeah if you don't mind and uh, he sent that over to me I'm really chuffed with that Stu thank you mate it's great 
And he also, being the nice bloke that he is, he included a couple of games as well. So he included Victory Run. There was uh, Keith Courage, which I can't remember the Japanese name. And another game which I don't know the name of, which is it's something to do with Hell, some platformer. I remember Stu playing it on his channel ages ago. Uh, so I've been playing those and enjoying those. So thank you very much, Stu. Absolutely brilliant, mate. So I've got four games to start me off anyway. And yeah, trying to get a PC Engine, a white one that isn't discolored. What a pain in the ass that was. But there's a guy on there who sells on eBay, he sells PC engines all day long. He's just got tons of them for sale. And I just waited until he got a white one. And he eventually got a white one because he got lots of dirty yellow ones. So I paid a, paid a decent price. He doesn't charge a lot for them. And of course, with the PC engine, if you don't know, it, it doesn't have RGB output. So it needs to be modified. Or there's a really great guy called Frederick over in Sweden, who Daz Kahonas Delora and also Ross Gross Newton have both promoted before. And he does these amazing custom SCART cables, these RGB SCART cables, which have uh, the amp inside the connector, and the connector goes on the back of the console on the extension output. It's really cool. And I've got to admit, I got one, and the, the condition, the, the quality of the picture side is absolutely incredible. It has a nice feature, it has a switch on the SCART as well. So you can switch between composite modes. You have, now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not very technical, but it's well, I am, but not in terms of this, about really, I'm still trying to get my head around it all. But it's this, uh, I think it's composite over sync, and then there's C-Sync, and C-Sync is where you get the pure, clean picture. So you can switch between the two, and the C-Sync picture is absolutely stunning. Uh, the quality of the graphics, they just look amazing. The colors really pop, everything looks really bright. Uh, very impressed with the SCART cable. Very, uh, they're not cheap at all. I will leave a link down in the description for anyone who's interested in picking one up. They're, they're quite expensive. But I would absolutely recommend picking one if you can because they're, they're the easiest way to get RGB out your console without having to have it internally modified. And the picture quality is stunning. I'm really impressed. And also Frederick as well is a really nice guy. And if you're watching this, mate, uh, yeah, really tough with the cable. Thank you for all your help as well. He was a really, really helpful guy. Any problems, any questions, he was always there to give you as much detail as you can. As you can. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So there you go. That's where I'm at the moment. I've got the Super Famicom, the Mega Drive, and the PC Engine, and my Mega 500. All absolutely amazing systems. Now, I've been thinking about, I have got a space in my unit over there. Now, I was thinking, what am I gonna do with that space? Obviously, I've got the PS1 as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. I've got the PlayStation 1 still that I picked up a couple of years ago. Uh, it's a nice chip one box, very nice and clean. So I don't know, I was thinking what am I going to do with this space in my cube unit, am I going to go and buy another console? Now I've got two consoles that I'm considering, one that I'm leaning for towards a lot more. So I'd really like your advice guys, if, if you own these consoles, what you think, because one of them I've never owned. Uh, one is the AV Famicom, which I've never owned, and the other is the Japanese Sega Saturn. And the Saturn looks really interesting because I've had that a few times, I really like that console, and there's a lot of great 2D stuff, I've never played on it. But the AV Famicom, I really like that. The only thing with the AB Famicom is I'd want to get it RGB modded, and you're talking like an extra hundred pounds to get it modded. So that would be in the future. But yeah, I'm tempted with that because I really like the NES when I had it, and there's a lot of games I want to play, and a lot of games I've never played. Uh, there's a game like Crisis Force on the Famicom, which looks absolutely incredible. I'm not very big on the vertical shooters, but that looks like a great game. Uh, I believe it's by Konami as well. So yeah, let me know guys what you think, AB Famicom or Sega Saturn. Uh, it won't be any time soon, because to be fair, I've got these, and I'm quite happy playing the games. And yeah, in terms of games, as I say, I picked up those for the PC Engine. Mega Drive, I've picked up a couple, I've picked up four games so far. Uh, quite happy with those, uh, nice condition, they're, they're absolutely sound. I didn't, I wasn't sure what to go for, to be honest. I didn't want to go for what I always go for, but a couple of them I have. Uh, I just wanted to go for games that I, I'm going to actually play and try and complete and get the most out of before I buy some more games. And that's my other idea as well, as, you know, I've said this many a time before and I've never done it, but I want to sort of play the games, get the most out of them. Then move on, buy some more. That just keeps constantly shoving the shelves full of games, you know. So yeah, so far I've got Sonic the Hedgehog, which is you know standard, mainly because I just want to complete it. Because every time I buy it, I never get to finish it. I get about halfway through and never get any further. And I've got Altered Beast, which I know a lot of people think shit, but it's nostalgic for me in a way. Because my, my cousin's mate Malcolm had it, and I was I don't know I've always just liked that game. It's just fun. And I also got two great games: I've got Castle of Illusion and Mickey Mouse which is an essential game because I've always wanted to complete that. I've never managed to finish it and I absolutely love that. I was playing it the other night and 
it's just fantastic. And then on top of that, I've got World of Illusion with Mickey and Donald, which I've, I think I've played once briefly. I've never actually put some time into it. So that'll be the next thing. And I also got a, a new RGB SCART cable for the Mega Drive from retrogamingcables.co.uk. Give them a plug because they're absolutely brilliant. Really nice bloke that works there. It was quite helpful when I was emailing him. And I got a C-Sync SCART for the Mega Drive. And the C-Sync SCART for the Mega Drive is incredible. I mean, normally I would have the SCART from uh, Retro Computer Shack on eBay. That's where I normally go for my Mega Drive SCARTs. And I couldn't, looking at his site, it, I wasn't 100% on his eBay, whether it was C-Sync or not. I don't think it was, because it wasn't that clear. But from what, the way I was reading it, I don't think they do a C-Sync on his SCARTs. And the one I got from RetroGamingCables.co.uk is incredible. Uh, the C-Sync is just stunning, man. The picture is just absolutely bright and clear and sharp. Uh, very, very impressed. And Sonic looks great. All of these looks cool, but Castle of Illusion really shines. It looks absolutely awesome. So I'm very happy anyway. So that's where I am, guys. I just wanted to let you know, really, what, what's going on. Because to be absolutely honest, I wasn't going to make any YouTube videos for quite a while. I just felt like it's not fair to you doing all this intermittent stuff where I'm making a video and then I, I say, oh, you know, I feel like it comes across like I'm really into it and I'm really like hyped and you know I'm going to get back into making videos regular. And then I'll just disappear for a month or two and then I'll come back again and I'm like, sorry, been away for a while, here I am again, you know. So I will try and make it a bit more regular, but I'm feeling the energy today, I'm feeling good and I feel like I want to make a video, so I thought, yeah, do it while you can, strike while the iron's hot because that's usually when you get the best results, I find. So that's that, and the other thing I've brought for the gaming setup is that. And that is a JVC stack stereo system, which I've got today actually, just arrived this morning, which I picked up from eBay the weekend. Now, at the moment, I've just got the amp with tape decks and speakers set up. It does also come with two surround sound speakers, which I've never used, because why would I need them for retro gaming? And it also came with a separate CD player and separate record deck as well. Uh, I haven't tried either of those yet. I mean, I don't need the CD player really, still, because I've got the play, I've got a PlayStation One, PlayStation Three, and an original Xbox in here, so they all play music. And record player I don't need because I've got a record player downstairs, so that that's fine. I don't need a record player up here as well. So yeah, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. I've, I've been testing it out today, messing with the equalizer, trying to get the best sound. And I've got to say, the Amiga, the PC Engine, and the Mega Drive sound great. PC Engine in particular. It was very, very quiet on the speakers I had before on my Sony 2.1 setup, which is now sitting over here. Uh, yeah, I wasn't impressed with the quality at all. I couldn't work out what was wrong with it. I put it on that and it sounds incredible. But the best is the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo sounds phenomenal. I mean, I can't get separate audio from the SNES because I'm using an official GameCube SCART and it doesn't have breakaway cables. And, you know, this, I haven't got it. You can, I know you can have the, the Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo can be actually modified to have red and white composite audio at the back, but I, I'm not asked about that, because quite frankly, the sound coming through those speakers is amazing. The bass when I was playing Street Fighter is insane. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. When you throw them to the floor, Jesus Christ, it's so cool. So yeah, I'm really, really happy to have picked that up. I mean, I was inspired, because I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do speaker-wise with that, because I've got my Sony speakers over there, which are for the PlayStation 3 and the original Xbox. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with the retro systems, and I know Xbox sort of is, but for the retro, retro. And I was watching a video from Ian Wilson 1978 from a long time ago, where he did a video about how he had his Sega, he had a, his Japanese Mega Drive and his Japanese Mega CD Model 1 set up. And he was showing how he had the sound routed from the Mega Drive to the Sega CD. And then he had his old Panasonic stereo and he had the sound out of the CD going through to the stereo. And I thought, you know what? I would love an old school stereo to put my music, my, my, um, my games through. Uh, so I went hunting, and of course eBay being eBay, it's hard to get one because most people won't deliver, they're only of collection only because of the size and weight. But I came across this lady and she hooked me up and, you know, cost me 30 quid. So you can't argue with that. She wanted 35, but the old best offer. I went 25, you know, be a bit cheeky. And she came to me with 30, I went, go on then, fair enough. Because there was another bloke selling one exactly the same model on eBay without the CD and record player, if I remember rightly. And he wanted 55 quid by, by it now, plus delivery. So yeah, she charged me 30 plus a tenner for delivery. Can't argue with that at all. So I'm very happy with that. And um, if you haven't seen my previous video, over there is where the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox are now. So I've got the 42 inch LG TV set up with the PS3 and the original Crystal Xbox that Jay from Snake 7 gave me. Uh, as you can see, I've got a new Star Wars figure. I've got Finn from The Force Awakens uh, to go with Kylo Ren. Got my brand new, just came in this week, Superman Sergei 
the uh, meerkat. I'm very happy with that. It's really cool. <laughs> And I've got all my Amiibos as well. So I've got all them hooked up there. I've got a new Amiibo, the Wolf Link Amiibo, which I picked up off eBay because the price has gone up, unfortunately. But I got it cheap on eBay. Very happy with that one. And I've got all my records as well. So yeah, that's looking nice. Got a 2.1 Sony set of stereo set up as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's looking good. I'm, I'm quite happy now. Uh, everything's coming together. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable in this room. And uh, as you can see, talking to Superman, you've got Batman back there. Yeah. 19 inches of pure, awesome Batman. And that is an official character from the new film, Batman vs Superman. And I suppose I should talk about that a little bit as well, shouldn't I really? So I did go and see Batman and V Superman. I saw it on the day of release, the 25th of May. And yeah, man, I, I've been getting so pissed off with looking. I shouldn't watch the videos online, I should know better. But I've watched tons of videos, both critics and fans. And I am so sick and dead, sick to death of the negativity surrounding this film. It's absolutely ridiculous. People are going so, so over the top, especially the critics, because, you know, like that Rotten Tomatoes site, the fan score was around about 70 last time I looked, and it was 30 for the bleeding critics. I'm sorry, but no way. No way is it a 30% of the film. That's utter bullshit. I honestly, I, you know, a bit of background. I've never read a comic in my life. The only references I've got are all the films, the Batman and Superman films that have been out, except for Val Kilmer and George Clooney. I never watched those two because they look shit, uh, which apparently they are. And I also watched, obviously, the Batman and Robin TV show in the, six, the 60s show we've had on when I was a kid. And other than that, nowadays, I watch the DC shows. All, I, only, I don't watch Gotham, but I do watch Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. All the brilliant shows, which I love. So they kind of give me a bit of an idea of the characters. I mean, they don't give you a full rounded idea, but I've got some kind of idea. And so I went into this film not really knowing what to expect because obviously, you know, Batman vs Superman, how's that actually going to work? I knew from watching Supergirl that there was kryptonite weapons that can be used. And I knew from all the advertisements and the trailers that obviously Batman has a mech suit, like an armoured outfit. So that, you know, that kind of made it a little bit easier to understand. And I knew from watching Collider Movie Talk and they're always talking about it, what the general concept was going to be. It was going to continue from Man of Steel. And obviously Bruce, you know, he's running in to save people as Wayne Tower is destroyed. And I've got to be honest, I watched the film and the first part of the film I was sitting there and I was worried. I was sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get into this. It was really cool watching Ben Affleck, you know, as Bruce Wayne running into danger. And I thought, yeah, this is a brilliant setup. I really like where this is going. But something just didn't sit right. It just, I don't know what it was, but I couldn't get into the film. And then we got to the dream sequence in the desert. So spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen the film yet. I'm just going to just talk about it. And, you know, so apologies if you don't want to hear anything, just skip forward. But yeah, when you get to the dream sequence in the desert, that's when it got me. I don't know what it, it just grabbed me, I was just hooked. And I absolutely fell in love with that movie. I, I haven't felt this energized by a movie in such a long time. I walked out of that cinema with a massive grin on my face and I was buzzing. I mean, all of the moments with Ben Affleck, Batman, I was just smiling like an idiot in the cinema. I was just so impressed. He was absolutely fantastic. Brilliant Bruce Wayne, brilliant Batman. Henry Cavill was as good as he was in Man of Steel. You know, I was happy with what he did. I love Jeremy Irons, I thought he was fantastic. And that Jesse Eisenberg, everyone's slagging off. And it does seem to be a 50 split on that one. You either think he's an irritating twat or you didn't mind him. And I didn't mind him, I didn't love him, but didn't irritate me at all. I actually kind of liked his portrayal and I kind of liked the way he went off on one. He was completely psychotic. Uh, especially that scene where he's trying to force feed the guy the sweet, that just cracked me up that bit. But yeah, I mean, overall, I was just really impressed. There were so many great action scenes. I love the fight between Batman and Superman. I, I just love everything to do with Batman. The Batman warehouse scene was just brutal. I was sitting in my chair next to this couple, and <laughs> when he gets that one guy and he just dives over a box and slams his head down, and, you, and I was like, literally audibly went, oh! <laughs> and I'm sure the woman next to me was like, what the hell? I couldn't resist, I just, I just couldn't hold it in. And then like, I heard him, he bust the one bloke's arm, and you heard it go <coughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. It was vicious, this is a really brutal Batman. But yeah, I just don't get all the negativity. I understand if you're you know, if you're in, really into film, and you know, you know how films are shot and edited and all that, and people complaining about the editing and all that, and the story and all that, and I totally understand and respect that, that's fine. But as a movie, just to go in, sit down, and have two and a half hours of absolute joy, that's what I got from it, it was brilliant. You know, two and a half hours as well. A lot of people have said it was boring and it was dark and it was too slow. I didn't get any of that. I love the dark nature. It definitely wasn't too slow. I, held, I was not bored one minute. It was just, just too much stuff going on to be bored. 
And, yeah, and then when Wonder Woman shows up, I mean, Jesus, that was so amazing. She's but that first time ever. I mean, I like music from films, and I appreciate a good score and a nice soundtrack. But that music that they use for the Wonder Woman theme is just incredible, man. <laughs> energy in the room and that come on I was like oh hell yes so I've just been playing that to death on YouTube since I'm, I'm really I'm, I don't care what anyone else thinks you know people can slag me off all I want I am a massive massive fan of Batman v Superman very impressed with the film I've got the blu-ray steel book on order I cannot wait until it actually comes out so I can watch it again especially it's going to be the three hour original three hour cut that was supposed to be released and then they chopped it down to two and a half to fit it in cinemas uh, so I'm excited to see what extra stuff we're going to get. I've seen that extra scene that's been released already with Jesse Eisenberg and Steppenwolf and the, the mother boxes, which whoosh, you know. I, just, I was like, okay, whatever. Looks cool. Don't really understand it, but it looks cool. I've got, I've, you know, obviously watching Clyde and Movie Talking Heroes. That kind of explains it a little bit, but I'm still a bit none the wiser. So that's the only thing I would say about the film is if you know absolutely nothing, you don't read comics, you've never watched a Batman or Superman film, you don't watch the DC TV shows, this film would be a little bit confusing <laughs> because that moment in the desert when it comes out of that and you've got the flash who i didn't even realize it was the flash at the time i only found it after i saw the film and then when, when i found out it was a flash i thought oh so it wasn't a dream it's more of a vision it's the flash coming through time and i thought that must be what it was but i thought if my, i said to my dad if you go and watch this film or watch it on blu-ray you ain't gonna have a clue you're gonna sit there scratching your head going what the bloody hell was that all about um, which is a bit of a shame really. I think they could have done a little bit better job maybe of explaining that for people. But then I suppose if you're going to throw things in there like that, I don't really know how you can make it any clearer. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really impressed. I love the film. So much so that I bought the Batman. I bought two Batman v Superman t-shirts so far, official licensed one. I bought a Batman v Superman keyring. I've got the, the Superman Sergei. The reason I didn't get the Batman one, because Batman's my favourite character at so, uh, which, because I don't think that the uh, the Batman meerkat looks as good as the Sergei Super Superman. I think he looks a lot cooler. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm proper down for this. I'm loving the DCU, and this is just fantastic start. You know, I've loved the Marvel movies; they've been great, except for four and Deadpool, because I know it was Fox, not Marvel, but you know, the Marvel property. Yeah, I watched Deadpool, and I was not impressed with that film at all. <laughs> That's another one. Oh, Jesus, that film was. Ev See, so many people raving about how amazing that film is. No, it's not. I thought it was very weak, boring as hell. I got so bored halfway through that film. The comedy, 99% of the jokes did not hit. I was just sitting there going, "Yeah, I, I understand what's what that's supposed to be. Why that's supposed to be funny. I understand it's a joke, but no, it's not making me laugh at all." <laughs> There's only a couple of jokes, and the one joke that made me laugh the most was the Heaven's Gate joke, which I thought was really good. And I, I, like, I really like Colossus. Other than that, I thought Deadpool was crap. But there you go. It, it's all down to personal choice. And if you like that kind of humour, which it doesn't do anything for me at all. It felt like it was being forced. Like it was. They were trying to. Like they were really self-aware, and they thought they were funnier than what they actually were. Uh, I don't know if that's Ryan Reynolds or what, but yeah, it didn't work for me. Much rather watch BVS. Batman's the best. So yeah, really chuffed with that one. Other than that. I don't think there's a lot more I can talk about at the moment, but yeah, I just really just wanted to say hello, let you know how I am and see how you guys are doing and let you know what's going on with the old retro situation. So I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better about it and a lot more comfortable and don't feel any pressure like I used to put on myself where I just wanted to buy everything all at once and just go crazy. You know, it's just nice to just buy a couple of games, play them and enjoy them. Uh, I have got some Super Famicom games on the way from Japan, just waiting for them to arrive. So when they arrive, I'll, I'll do a video and show you what I picked up, guys. So thank you very much for watching. As always, really appreciate it. Uh, oh, and just a quick thing before it goes on. Uh, you may notice there's no adverts on my videos now. Uh, wasn't going to mention it, but what the hell. I've took all the ads off my videos. I've terminated my AdSense account. Uh, reason being, not like I'm taking a moral high ground here, like a stands or anything. I'm not. Uh, there's just really two reasons. There's one, as much as you get some money out of it, you don't get a lot of money. You know, if you're lucky, you get paid twice a year. Some, most of the time, it's like once a year I get paid. I make absolute pennies from you know, my YouTube video advertising. So 
you know, I've always argued that, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's free money. Why not do it? It's not harming anyone, is it? It's just adverts. But I just thought, that ah, can't be asked anymore. And then also, ads were starting to get on my tits as a viewer, so <laughs> that was one of the main reasons, actually. Because when you're not using the PC and I'm using the apps on the Xbox or the PlayStation, oh, the ads are so infuriating. Like, I've got my music on there, I've got playlists. So when I'm playing a playlist while I'm doing my housework or just chilling, it's constantly annoying because after every single song they throw an advert in and it drives me absolutely insane. And I thought, you know what, if this is how annoying it is for me, how annoying is it for my viewers? So I thought, nah, bollocks to it. So I just deleted my AdSense account and just scrapped all the ads. So my channel is completely ad-free now. So hopefully that'll make it easier for you to watch and won't irritate you as much. <laughs> so yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Let me know down below. AV Famicom or Sega Saturn, Japanese Sega Saturn, what do you reckon? And yeah, just let me know your thoughts and uh, what's happening with yourselves. And I will be back soon, I suppose. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.